This is the corner of our couch. It's a place we like to read stories to our kids. And I happen to find as a parent that sometimes books that are intended for kids actually do a better job at helping me to learn and understand important things. So this is a little different, but what I want to do for today's devotion is to read a book for you. Now, you can share this with your kids, but really this is uh, for just everybody in our church. And it's a book called God's Very Good Idea, written by Trillia Nubel. And let's go ahead and do that. It starts in the beginning. In fact, before the beginning, God had a very good idea. It was an even better idea than solar panels, chocolate chip cookies, the super soaker, color TV, fireworks, the life raft, roller skates, or the x-ray machine. God's idea was to make people, lots of people, lots of different people who would all enjoy loving him and all enjoy loving each other. They would all be made in his image, they would all be like mirrors reflecting what God is like. Because God is full of love, they would be full of love too. So God got to work. He made a beautiful world for people to live in. Then he made the first people, a man and a woman. And he said to them, be happy. Enjoy loving me and loving each other. Have a huge family that will fill the earth and look after the earth and enjoy the earth. God carried on creating people. All of them were made in his image. All of them were different too. Some were men, and some were women. Some liked reading, and some liked riding bikes. Some had darker skin, and some had lighter skin. Some had curly hair, and some had straight hair. We live in God's world. We are all different, but we are also all the same. Everyone you see is different than you and the same as you. They might look different or speak different or play different, but they are all made in God's image, and so they are all valuable. This is God's very good idea. But people ruined God's very good idea. The first people chose not to love God. This is called sin. And because they chose not to love God as they should, they forgot how to love each other as they should. We are the same. We choose not to love God, and so we are not able to love each other like we should. We sin. Sometimes we treat others badly because they are different than us. People fight with each other. People are mean to each other. People laugh at each other. Because we have ruined God's very good idea, he's not pleased with us. And our sin means we can't be friends with him or enjoy living with him. We need God's forgiveness for ruining his very good idea. And it's the same for everyone in the world. People who like reading need forgiveness. And people who like riding bikes need forgiveness. People with darker skin need forgiveness, and people with lighter skin need forgiveness. People with curly hair need forgiveness, and people with straight hair need forgiveness. But God was not surprised by people ruining things. He had always had a very good plan to rescue his very good idea. So God got to work. He came to earth as a person, Jesus. Jesus loved people who were different than him. He loved people who no one else loved. He says, your faith has made you well. He says, I can see. He always enjoyed loving all the different people he met. Jesus shows us how to enjoy loving each other. But people didn't love Jesus. Instead, they hated him. They put him on a cross to die, but this was part of God's plan. On the cross, Jesus took our sins so that we can be forgiven. Jesus forgives his people for their sins. 
Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose back to life and then went back to live in heaven. And then he gave people his spirit to help them enjoy loving him and loving all the different people they know. Jesus helps us to love each other. One day, God will finish his very good idea. Jesus will come back and make the world perfect again. And anyone who has asked Jesus to forgive them will live there with their different languages and skin colors. And they will enjoy loving God and loving each other. They will enjoy praising God for making, rescuing, and finishing his very good idea. But here's a very, very, very good part of God's very good idea. You don't have to wait till then to enjoy it. Jesus welcomes anyone who asks him to forgive them. And when Jesus welcomes someone, he welcomes them into his family forever. He welcomes people who like reading and people who like riding bikes. He welcomes people with darker skin and people with lighter skin. He welcomes people with curly hair and people with straight hair. God's family is called the church. Your church friends are your brothers and sisters, your wonderful and colorful church family. You can enjoy loving them and loving God with them. And this is God's very good idea. Lots of different people enjoying loving Him and loving each other. God made it. People ruined it. He rescued it. And He will finish it. And with your church family, you can enjoy being a part of it right now. Now, I love this series of books. It talks about it as a true story. And it is true. It's a tale that tells the truth. And it says, how do we know about God's very good idea? And it says right here, the the story in this book begins where all things begin. In Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created mankind in his own image, male and female. And God blessed them. Part of living in a a blessed life is to enjoy loving God and loving each other in this world. And then it says this, Every man and woman ever born is created in the image of God. Every tribe, tongue, and nation has the privilege of being a part of this magnificent distinction. As God's image bearers, we are all equal in dignity and worth, but we are also all equally fallen. Romans 3.23 This is why it is wonderful that Jesus came to rescue people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. And one day there will be a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne praising God. Shows us that in Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. So this understanding that God has created each of us equally with dignity, value, and beauty should inform our views of one another. Because knowing that we are made in His image And that he loves us enough to want to forgive us means we can, with his Spirit's help, truly love one another. Brothers and sisters, I hope that we will be those people who get it. Who get that we can look out and anyone we see, any human, any person who's created in God's image is someone that we can love and offer the good news of Jesus. And if they don't receive it, we can still love them and treat them with the value that they were created to have.